Yeah, I know. Uh, time to bite the bullet and cut the actual dovetails for real. So, what you just watched, oh, by the way, welcome back to the shop and my channel, and what you just watched is me cutting the final tails, I'm going to get the tails and pins right this time, on the top and the bottom of the, uh, of the uh, arm of the chest of drawers. This is the, these are the tails on the bottom, okay, um, and I just did the top, which is, of course, the cherry piece. Uh, this may be a relatively short video, because I'm just going to do these, I want to demonstrate how I have to do the sides, which is going to be an interesting story in itself. So um, let me get this out of here and check some of the fit, and then we'll, we'll get started on the sides. That's what I was talking about. Uh, to do the pins, I have to do it at the top of the jig, as you've seen in my other demonstration. And this is basically how I have to mount it so that I can get it. This thing weighs a lot. It's cherry. So quick story. Um, in the old um, uh, catalog, or bef before they had much on the web, for the web, actually, uh, in the uh, Lee Valley, Lee, excuse me, Lee Valley owns these guys now. In the, in the Lee Jig catalog, they showed a cabinet maker who had his jig set up on a stairwell and a piece of wood hanging down the stairwood, the stairwell that had to have been about eight feet long. And it basically says, you can do this anywhere kind of thing. But no. Now, little, little, little backstory here. This is the largest piece I've ever dovetailed but it's not the largest dovetails I've ever done. When I was teaching at the boat shop, uh, we needed a new companionway for the schooner, and Joe said, teach them how to do dovetails. Okay, Joe. So I taught a little class on doing dovetails. Some were amazed that they actually worked as well as they did. Anyhow, let me set this up, and we'll start cutting. I'm not gonna shoot the whole thing. I'll shoot a little bit of the cutting, but let me get this all set up and indexed, and we'll be ready to go. We are set up. I've got it indexed where I need it here. Now, there's no changes to the bit. The only changes are to adjust the fit of the tail socket. You move the, uh, you saw it at three quarters, which is what the thickness of the stock is. And you move this fore and aft to determine the depth of the cut. And I think I, with the test pieces, I had to go back a 16th. I'll probably have to do that with this as well. But here we are. Ready to make cuts. Um, let's get that where I need it. Just got to remember to only cut between the Ys and not anywhere else. So I'll make a pass. I'll sh shoot some of that. And lead jig ge geometry. Your piece in the fronts get rotated this way. The piece in the tops get rotated this way. And the reason you rotate it is to keep the tail and pin orientation correct. It's an interesting piece of engineering and mathematics. So you can set the pins and tails, you can set the dovetails any way you want. As long as you rotate the pieces and have the orientation correct. This is the inside. And with the bottoms, I, the inside came this way and the inside goes up for half blinds. I forget what it is for, for uh, through dovetails, but the same thing. You, one goes this way and then the other one goes the other way. But you always rotate them clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever you want, to get the orientation of all the pins and tails correct. Now that means that one side, it only, the bottom only fit on one end, the top only fit on the other end, and vice versa. So let me, let me make some, some, let me put on a headset and cut out the noise and do some recording and do some, sh some, some cutting of the wood.
Okay, that's that's how it's done when you do something like this. Let me let me show you. Let me, let me pull this piece out. Uh, <clears throat> and we have pins and pin sockets, and the sh the the piece is going to hide the dovetails from the outside viewer. Anyway, there's there they are. <clears throat> And there on that end. So that that that's how you do the big pieces. Then we gotta test fit all the stuff together. Get on that. I'm all covered in man glitter, as people, some people will say. The, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do. A, I'm gonna do a test fit of dovetails. So the base is on the floor. I'm gonna bring over this piece. I'm gonna make sure I get the right one in the right place. I think this is where I want to go, like this. Oops, you know what? It's upside down. That's bad. The sawhorse is here just to hold the piece in place while I do the other one. There we go. So I want the long one on that side. Long one on that side. I do believe this is what I want, just like this. I know you really can't see the dovetails joining up and whatever, but uh, there's a little bit of tweaking I need to do by hand on some of these because it variances in machines and whatever, but it uh, shouldn't be a big deal. Kind of clamp this one in place, kind of, so I can put the other one on, it doesn't fall over. No, that's not it, that's the top. The other one's right here. And it's going to go uh, this way, because the big dovetail is at this end. OK, that's holding up on its own. And now the top. Ugh. I'll bring the camera over and show you some of this. I'm not going to put them all the way in. Ladies and gentlemen, the chest of drawer carcass. Uh, the dovetails fit nicely. Like I said, I got a little tweaking on some of them. That's not no big deal. Let me just bang these down a little bit so I can do some. They fit snug, but not too snug. I mean, I can, I can open them up pretty easily. I'm going to have to sand this anyway, but. Okay, they're not all the way in, but let's bring the camera over on, uh, let's do some handheld work and take a look at this. Rather than handheld work, this camera runs off of AC in the shop, as does the monitor and everything else. Uh, if you can see the dovetails here, um, they're not all the way down because I don't want them all the way down until the final fit and take the uh, clamp off. And move, and there it is. It's it's a little bit wobbly at the bottom because the, the the bottom is pine, top is cherry. Now, next step is I have to take this all apart, put the top and the bottom aside, and start working on fitting where the uh, where the dividers are going to go for the drawers. This drawing is my reference drawing to where all of the drawers and parts go is only a reference drawing. It's like having a table of offsets for a boat. You give a table of offsets to a shipwright, build me a boat, and he can build you a boat from that little set of numbers. Uh, this is basically, give me the dimensions and what style you want it in, and we can build, you know, any, any good woodworker that does this kind of stuff can, can build it for you. Not that I'm saying I'm a good woodworker, I'm just, you know, that's it. Yep. The lead jig for the win. I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to start marking out all the parts that I, the places where I need to put the dividers in here. And um, then I will, uh, uh, next video, we'll, we'll, we'll do the uh, cutting out, routing out the rabbits or dados for the drawer dividers and the dovetails for uh, the front where the, um, where the front dividers are going to go, which are, of course are cherry. 
Uh, let me bring the camera in a little bit closer so you can take a look at the dovetails themselves. This is what I mean, you know, they're not all the way down, but they've got a nice snug fit, but they're not so tight that I'll break anything. So with that said, and that shown, let's uh, end the video. This segment, this, this episode will end here. Next episode, we'll be doing the dados for uh, the drawers and shelves and everything. Uh, I know this is a, a short video, I'm trying to keep them shorter. So until next time, make great things out of wood. Cut some dovetails. See ya.